Welcome to Lipids Part 3. In this very brief tutorial, we'll um, give a, a broad overview of how substances um, move through or across the cell membrane. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing is just linguistically. Don't get hung up on the words. Some people talk about going across the membrane. Some people say through. Um, you know, either way. The main thing to think about is that in the lipid bilayer, while the polar heads are on the exterior, it's the nonpolar tails that create the carrier of the membrane. So when we think about cell membranes, we think nonpolar. So whenever we want to, um, like, you know, predict how a substance will transport through the membrane, we think about what we know about intermolecular forces and like dissolves like. So substances that are nonpolar are going to travel easily through the cell membrane and substances that are, that are polar won't. Um, because within our body fluids we have ions and small covalent molecules and larger molecules, um, there's a variety of mechanisms that we can use for getting substances um, through our membranes. Um, they're classified by the energy required. So here we can see the passive transport, right? So passive transport, transport um, is where no um, energy is needed. The substances can get through um, without additional energy, right? So no energy needed for transport. So here we could have simple diffusion. Um, it could be directly through the membrane or through a channel protein. Um, we do have facilitated um, diffusion. And then there are carrier proteins that help with all of that. And then finally, we have active transport. And so active transport, as you can see right here, is energy is needed um, for transport through the membrane. So the two big distinctions are passive and active transport. And so now we'll look at those a little more closely. Um, before we move on, though, I just wanted to note the importance of the role of the, the various membrane proteins. So we didn't talk about membrane proteins a lot in our protein chapter, but we're, because we were really waiting until we got to lipids and cell membranes because they work together as a team. Alrighty, so now let's just take a little bit of what we know about, um, you know, substances being soluble and moving. So let's look here, right? So remember passive transport, no um, energy is needed for transport. It happens basically by diffusion, right? We know that substances want to go from a high concentration to a low concentration. So um, um, simple diffusion is literally that, that that we can see in our diagram, right? We don't even need a membrane protein. The substances can go directly through the membrane all by themselves, right? So simple diffusion means pass directly through the membrane. All other forms of transport, as we can see, require some sort of membrane protein. So what kind of substances can just go straight through? Well, right, they're going to be hydrophobic, right, which is another way to say nonpolar. And so this would be, for example, like oxygen and carbon dioxide and um, the steroids which we know show up as a variety of hormones in different substances. Okay, or we'll get to that, so stay tuned for cholesterol. And then the facilitated diffusion, right, so keep in mind that's also passive transport, right, so no additional energy is required, but it needs to be facilitated because the substances are hydrophilic, so they're not um, attracted to the nonpolar cell membrane. So what happens here is the molecules bind um, to uh, the membrane protein, which then, um, in the case of the facilitated transport, right, it changes shape to allow the molecule 
to be released on the other side. Or it could be just a direct channel. So that would be the simplest form. Okay, so what kind of substances are we going to, are going to require facilitated diffusion to get through the cell membrane? So this is going to be small ions and um, small, po co excuse me, small polar covalent compounds. All right, so these are both um, passive forms of transport. And then um, briefly we'll look at active transport. And what we will see there, right, is now we have to have energy supplied. And the reason for this is because the substances are moving against the gradient. We're going to try to go from low concentration to high. So that requires energy. It's like swimming upstream. All righty. So um, in most cases, you'll see right that it's energy from ATP. So we see that right here. Right? So there's our ATP. And very common is um, the movement of the sodium and potassium ions um, across the membrane, right? So inside the cell, we have a high potassium ion concentration. And outside the cell, we have a low potassium concentration. However, if we look at the arrows here, we see we're moving potassium into the cell. The potassium ions are trying to move in. So that requires ATP energy. Um, likewise, if we look inside the cell, we see that there is a low sodium ion concentration. And outside the cell, we have a high sodium ion concentration. So we can um, simultaneously get the sodium ions out of the cell, going against this concentration gradient while the potassium comes in. Alrighty, so that wraps up our um, overview of how substances um, move through the cell membrane. The main thing to keep in mind is like dissolves like and that we consider cell membranes nonpolar and then the different whether we need passive transport or active transport and the role of the membrane proteins. Please take some time now to work homework problems to reinforce your understanding.